Want to learn how to do any times table in one minute or less? Then click on the link below and master any times table you want. Now on to the video. Welcome back Intuitive Minds, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be explaining how I use maths or mathematical concepts to help me draw. You might be thinking, how can you use maths in art, especially to draw? Well it's actually pretty common. The following are some of the concepts that I use both consciously and subconsciously to help me whenever I draw. They are parallel and perpendicular lines, counting squares, mapping of the terrain, estimating and fractions, scale factor and enlargement, if applicable, perspective, angles, curvature and lines, as well as straight lines, force, pressure and area. Let's get into it. So what are parallel and perpendicular lines? Parallel lines are straight lines that never touch or meet, whereas perpendicular lines are lines which cross each other at 90 degrees or at right angles. In other words, after choosing the picture I want to draw and expanding it to the size of my canvas, I draw parallel and perpendicular lines, or simply put, a grid on the original picture, and then I copy that grid, or I redraw that grid, the same size, the very same grid, onto the blank canvas I will be drawing on. I then pick a random point on the original picture where I would like to start the drawing and count the corresponding squares on my canvas, after which I start to draw. I estimate or I make an educated guess as to where on the original grid, on the original grid lines, the starting point is. The grid lines form squares and rectangles. Is the starting point in the corner of the square or rectangle, which make things a lot easier, or is it on one of the surrounding lines of the square or rectangle? And if it is on any one of the surrounding lines, where on the lines do we begin? Is it halfway along the line, or a third of the way, or a quarter? As you grow in your maths ability and in your art ability, you can start to sense the breaking of lines into proportions or fractions. The halfway point of the line is the second best starting point after the corner point of the square or rectangle. Now, as I start to draw, I am mapping the terrain of the original picture onto the blank canvas, which means I am transferring each part of the original map grid onto the new map grid. And since both grids are the same, the scale factor that I am using is 1, or in other words there is a 1 to 1 scale relationship. I didn't enlarge the second grid, although I could have done. If the second grid I draw on is twice as large, then the scale factor of enlargement will be 2, and so on. There is also an element of perspective, which is the way you look at things, or the way things are seen. So I would ask myself, is the object flat, or is it at some angle? Is it two-dimensional or is it three-dimensional? Does it get smaller and converge to some point or does it get larger? So these are the kind of questions that I would ask myself. So these are all concepts that are considered when I draw. I also consider the angles of the lines I am drawing in relation to the grid lines as taken from the original picture. A lot of the lines that I draw are really straight and involve many curves of various sizes. Could be small, could be large, and there are elements of straight lines in there as well. Maybe not for the majority of the time, but or the majority of the picture, but there are elements of straight lines in there as well. Have a look at how I intersect the grid lines with the lines that I am drawing, and I'll join you in a few moments.
Now when it comes to shading, the areas on the original picture that are the darkest indicate where I should apply the most force or more force on the pencil to get the darker shade. Remember, force equals pressure times area or pressure multiplied by the area of coverage. And so the lighter the shade, the lighter the pressure that's being applied on the pencil. The lighter the pressure being applied on the pencil and so the smaller will be the force. So these are just some of the mathematical concepts I use to help me draw. Can you think of any other concepts? Are there any other concepts that you can think of? Let me know in the comments below. like this video and found it helpful and insightful do leave a like share any of your thoughts and ideas in the comments and do subscribe and click the bell for more videos like this thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time